Welcome to another Imaginomic Portraiture tutorial. In this segment, we're going to be showing you how some of the actions work that we have for free download at our site at Imaginomic.com. We decided to put together some actions, kind of keep them simple so you wouldn't have to worry about making all kind of slider movements and all. And the basic idea was to give you something that would batch process real easy, but at the same time, show you how to utilize some of the creative power that's available in this plugin. So hop in and let's see what we got. The actions are divided up into two main categories. We've taken the default settings that are hard coded into the portraiture plugin and made a series of actions that go along with those. And then we've added some customized actions that show some of the creativity that's available with the plugins. We're going to start with the default total image action, the very first one. And we're going to click the arrow here to slide down to show you what the settings are and the steps that go along with the action itself as we created it. First off is we have a stop that runs when we click on the run here. It brings up a little message and it tells you what the action is actually going to do. And we've put this in there for people that are new to actions and also it gives you an idea when it first comes up what action that you're actually running because it is easy sometimes to click on one above or below, run the wrong thing, use it as a batch process and process several hundred images and not even realize it. You just click on continue and then the plugin itself will run with its default settings here which in this case is fine, medium and large are all set to zero and then threshold is set to 20. Portrait size is set to auto detect. Our skin tones mask is set to new from image which means it just grabs the average skin tones from the image itself. The apply detail smoothing to skin tones is turned off and that means that the settings up here in detail smoothing are applied to the image as a whole. It gets everything. It's the background if it's got any type of skin tones in here. It gets everything on there. Anything it considers to be within this skin tone area that's selected automatically by the plugin. The enhancement section is by default checked, but none of the settings are on. They're all zeroed out. So we click OK. And the result is that the action is applied to the background layer as a whole and it is not adding any type of layer mass to it. The next action default skin tones only. We're going to run it and, and show you a little bit of difference between it and the default total image. But first, we're going to click the arrow here to pop down the steps of the action. And we're going to click this checkbox out here beside the stop step here. Remember that's the one that shows what the action is actually going to do. Because after a while you may not want that to come up there. You may just get so used to it or you may have it set up with a, another action that you don't really need that popping up there so you have to hit continue. So you just simply check that and it turns that step off. Now we run the action. You notice that that little continue box didn't pop up there. And the only difference is now is that we have this apply detail smoothing to skin tones only checkbox is checked here. So in other words, it's only going to apply the detail smoothing settings to skin tones. We click OK. And there it is. The difference between total image and skin tones only is that the skin tones only has the default settings applied only to skin tones. The next action we're going to run is the default with skin tones mask layer. I'm going to pop it down make sure the stop step is turned off. I'm going to run the action. At this point, it's the same default settings. We've got apply detail smoothing to skin tones only is turned on. And then over here, now you notice that this mask output option, create transparency mask, is checked there. And what this does is it takes the skin tones themselves and it's going to create a transparency mask. So we're going to click OK here. As you can see now, as we come out of the plugin, we have a new layer that's been generated. And this layer contains only the skin tones that was selected in the plugin. Plus, sitting on top of it, we now have a white mask. We've got the brush over here selected and then we've got the foreground color set to black. So what we could do is we could come back in and we could brush in around areas in here if we wanted to add some of the image back to it there, a little bit of the background back to it. Or we could do that with the opacity setting up here like this. So basically the difference between this one and the previous two is that this one actually generates a new layer using the skin tones only and then it adds a layer mask on top of that for further refinement. The next action we're going to run is the default total image with real grain. Some of you purchased a package that contained the real grain, portraiture, and noise where plugins all in one. And so we're going to show you what you can do when you combine them together. First off, we're going to pop it down here and turn off that stop step in there. We're going to run the action. As you see, portraiture is set to default settings, and we have the apply detail smoothing to skin tones only turned off. Click OK. The real grain plugin then runs. 
and we've got some settings here customized settings that we have done in advance just added a little bit of uh, pop and color to the image with a little tiny bit of grain on it I click OK and now you can see that we've got from here to here using the action and you really didn't have to do anything other than just run the action we're not going to actually run any of the rest of the actions down here until we get into some of the customized actions that we have here at the bottom the reason being is that most of the actions basically are the same thing that we've already shown there are just a few different settings that in the plugin itself in other words you're, you're turning a little bit more smoothing on or you're taking away a little bit more texture in it so we're, we're not going to go into any kind of details on those we're going to go down in here into some of the actions that show a little bit more customization and creativity and the first one we're going to work with is color washer color washer is pretty cool it's got kind of a neat contrast to it and so we're going to run it and give you an idea about what it does here let's uh, turn off that stop step there we click OK to run it and as you can see it kind of pulls a little bit of the color out of it and that's where you get the name color washer from it gives you some nice contrast there and again any of these settings in any of these plugins can be dealt with any way you want to there's just just no end to them and all that but some of these kind of give you a baseline that you can go with you know you can even back off the warmth even more on it there so you can ditch work with these settings pretty much anything you want to and come up with some unique customizations of your own and then you could turn right around up here and click on the little floppy icon and save it out as your own custom settings and run that later on so we click OK and there you have it here's your before and there's your after the next action we're going to deal with is called PTFX 1A Now PTFX 1A is a little bit more complex it's got quite a few more steps in it than the other actions has there's a lot of layer blend modes that are being changed and we're adding some texture and a few other little things that are going on so for the sake of the length of this tutorial we're not going to get into each individual step we're just going to show you the end results and how you can tweak it for some further customization so we're going to run this action it takes a few seconds as this action is a little bit more complex than the others we've run so far the end result is we end up with three layers we got the background layer we got layer one with mode set to lighten we got layer one copy with its layer blend mode set to screen filled to 38 percent this just bumps down the effect that we had here you're not really cut and dried on in any of this stuff you can do whatever you want to with it we can start changing these layer blend modes up here and get different effects with them as you can see the effect that we were overall trying to achieve is one of the soft painterly look that's really popular out there on the web you can do the same thing with the other layer you can change the layer blend modes to it and you can turn one layer off one layer on vice versa and there's really a lot of stuff that you can do with this action and come up with some nice little painterly texture effects the last action we're going to run here is one called PTRG Makeup 1 this combines the portraiture and real grain plugins into one effect and the end result is it gives a kind of a nice textured makeup look as if you had some uh, a makeup artist do a makeup job on the person and you'll notice it'll smooth out the freckles and everything on here and give it a nice uh, powdery makeup look to it so let's run it and for the sake of the length of the tutorial here we're just gonna let it run automatically without going through any of the steps because it actually runs portraiture a couple of times and also real grain in on top of it so we're just gonna let it run take care of itself in the background and show you the end result and there we have it voila there's before and there's after and you can see the nice even texture Scott the nice almost makeup artist look makeup that it has on there and all done with one click so this ends this segment of the Imaginomic portraiture tutorial that's dealing with the actions that we've offered for free download we hope you've enjoyed this and that you can get some good use out of it and as always uh, leave us an email and let us know what you think thanks a lot